Uh, okay, guys, uh, we're going to get started now. Um, are there any questions from last week? Anything on anyone's mind? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, actually, hang on one second. I'm going to give you a hard drive that has them on. So you can just go right to your computer. And there's both kinds of USB cords there. Uh, anybody, anything else? OK. We are going to continue on with a little bit of color theory today, um, but we just to sort of give you a snapshot of the day, uh, we're going to deal with color theory. We're going to jump into smart objects, and then we're actually going to do one of your homework assignments today in class if we get time. I know. Isn't that nice of me? It's like, okay, because if you do it with me in class, you're going to get 100 on it anyway, So, or at least a 95. I'm very stingy with my hundreds, but nonetheless. Um, so anyway, that being said, <clears throat> okay, I just wanted to jump back into this frame one last time to refresh everybody's memory. Eyes were glazing over by the time we got this. Last week was a long week, I get that. Conventional color wheel. Red, by definition, is at 3 o'clock, 0 degrees. That's where red is. Green and blue, which are the other primary colors in an additive system, are as far away from red as they can possibly get and as far away from each other. That's why they're at 120 degrees and 240 degrees because we've got a 360 degree circle. Make sense, everyone? Right? Uh, directly across from the primary colors are the secondary colors. They would be the primaries of a, of a subtractive system, but they're called the secondary colors here in our additive system. Uh, and they are the complement of those colors. So the opposite of red is cyan. If you add equal amounts of red and cyan together, you get a neutral gray, and that's true for all the complementary color relationships. So the complement of green is magenta. If you add equal amounts of magenta to each other, you wind up in this center here, neutral gray. If you actually add yellow and blue together, they are the complements of one another. Equal amounts of them, you end up in the center, neutral gray. What that should tell you, though, is that when you add complementary colors to a primary color, it starts to remove its saturation. It starts to lessen its saturation. What we're really talking about that's important to notice from this whole color wheel thing is that the most saturated colors sit out here at the very border. The least saturated colors are right here in the middle. As a matter of fact, if we hit a true, a true neutral gray, that has no saturation at all. If you take a color file and you desaturate it, you end up with a black and white file because you have no color left in it anymore. You just have the luminosity. Are we good on this part here? The only thing that is missing from this, though, is lightness or brightness. We have no white in here. We have no black in here. In order to do that, we need a third dimension, and we'll talk about what that looks like in just a second. But everybody's comfortable with this part? OK. Hey, Mimi, if you want to come on in or if you want to, we can do this during the break. Uh, yeah, do any of you have an error I'll show you what it does. I'm going to pause the recording.